Hey, what's up guys? I hope you're doing well. If you're new, my name's Cal and I'm an accounting student, but I have some other interests too, like productivity, personal finance, and self-development. So if you find some of these things interesting as well, feel free to hit that subscribe button and follow along on the journey. So today, let's get right down to it and talk about how to get an internship. No experience, no problem. We're gonna talk all about how you can lock in your dream internship or even your dream job using some very basic steps. I do wanna say it's not easy to get a job. It can be very emotionally draining. It can take a lot of time. It can take more time than you expect. But if you commit to the process and use some of these strategies, I think it will help level up your application game across the board. So the first thing you need to do is make a list of your top five or top 10 employers. Make a list of the top places you wanna work. And maybe there aren't 10 incredible places that you wanna work, but maybe there are three places you would absolutely love to work. And then find some other companies that you would find interesting or places you wouldn't mind working because we do need to prepare for the fact that you might not get a job on your first application. I would also say set your sights high. Set your sights on those places that you know are awesome places to work. I want you to get into the mindset that you have something significant to bring to the table. Don't be intimidated by these companies even though I understand being intimidated but consider the fact that you have incredible assets to bring to the table, you have incredible skill sets to bring to the table, and that a company like that needs someone like you. And the truth of the matter is, companies need great people. And if you're a great person and you have a specific skill set, or even if you're just starting out and you're willing to learn, you could be incredibly valuable for them. After you've made your list of five to 10 companies, you're going to target these companies. And we're gonna talk more about that in just a minute. Try to imagine what these companies and what these firms would want in their ideal applicant. Try to put yourself in their shoes and understand maybe what they are looking for in their ideal candidate. Step number two in this process is go to LinkedIn. Now, in all honesty, I barely use LinkedIn. It seems to take me about six months to update my LinkedIn whenever I do have a professional change or anything like that. But when it comes to applying for jobs, LinkedIn is an awesome resource. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your list of companies you made in the previous step and then start looking for people who work at those companies in roles that are adjacent to the one that you're interested in or very similar to the one that you're interested in. And what you're gonna do is reach out to these people and ask them, hey, can I buy you a cup of coffee sometime? This might sound intimidating, and it definitely is. You're asking to meet up with a stranger to hear about their job experience. But at the end of the day, the benefits from doing this are like tenfold. Here's an example of a short DM that you could send them on LinkedIn. Hi there. I noticed that you've been working for X company for a couple of years now. X company is on my short list of the top places I'd like to work. Would you be open to grabbing a coffee and sharing your experience with the firm so far? I'd love to get some firsthand insight from someone who has worked there. Thanks for your time. You can copy that message word for word and send that as a DM to all the people that you find who work for these dream companies of yours. Sending a message like this does two things. For one, it's gonna actually tell you what it's like to work there. Now, they may be a little bit biased when they're sharing about their company with you. Either one way or the other, if someone's just giving you a completely awful report, it's not often that an entire company is completely trash. But also, if it's a completely glowing report, of course, there are negatives of working for any firm or any company. But at the end of the day, you're going to get someone's firsthand experience of what it's like to work for this company day in, day out. That's hugely valuable. Secondly, and this may not be something that you think of right away, what do you think that this employee is gonna do when they go back to the office? I promise you, they are going to talk to their friends, their coworkers, their boss, that they had coffee with this person, it was a great time, it was a great opportunity, had some great conversations, and you're gonna get a little bit of name recognition out of this. This is so massive when you're competing against other candidates. Now you're the person who got coffee randomly with so-and-so, and they know you from all the other randoms who applied. Hugely valuable. This step, if you really want the job, is a necessity. People at the firm have to get to know you. It's essential. You may have heard something before, like it's not what you know, it's who you know. And that's very true. Often when I've heard that, I thought, oh, I need to have a good friend or a decent connection to someone within the company in order to sort of leverage that when I want a job at a company. But the method I just showed you kind of is a hack to that system. You're kind of accelerating a relationship with someone quickly. And it's not manipulative by any stretch. You are genuinely interested in what this company is like to work for. But just the way that people work, they're going to establish a connection with you. Hopefully the coffee goes well, which it most likely will, because you're showing interest in this person, a genuine interest in what their experience has been like. And then human behavior kind of dictates that they're gonna go back to the office and share with their friends and coworkers what happened. And people are going to become familiar with you. 
huge win. If this company that you wanna work for does have a recruiter, now would be a good time to reach out to them. For myself, between step two and step three, sometimes I flip flop these. If it's very obvious that a recruiter is available for the company, I might reach out to them first, explain who I am, explain my situation, why I wanna work for the company. And then that recruiter may connect me with some employees who would chat with me, would share their experiences. And that is like best case scenario. If you can swing that, I think you stand a very good chance of being at the top of the stack when it comes to locking down the job. The reason for this is because the employees that the recruiter recommends are 100% going to come back to the recruiter and tell the recruiter what they thought of you, how the lunch went, how the call went, how the coffee went, and that's gonna give you a huge leg up over all the competition. The one thing I would say is before you speak to the recruiter or really before you go meet with an employee as well just to hear about their experience, you need to think about your story a little bit. Why do you want this job? What's your journey been like so far? What has brought you to this point? And what have you learned in your career so far? Alongside of your own story, I would make sure that you have three to five solid questions you can ask the recruiter. These don't need to be profound, earth shattering questions, but just make sure that you have some genuine questions to ask them about what the company is like, what their experience at the company has been like, things like that. And above all, whenever you're on the phone with a recruiter, make sure to be enthusiastic and sincere whenever you're talking to them, hugely important. Moving on to step four, we are stepping into the interview process now at this point, most likely, depending on where you're at with each firm. When it comes to interviews, you might not be aware of this, but there are typically two kinds of questions, or we'll, we'll break them down into two different categories. The first type of question you're gonna see are situational-based questions. These type of questions are gonna sound something like, how would you resolve this sort of conflict in the workplace? And now, when it comes to situational questions, firms are wondering how you would respond to that situation. And so they're looking for a specific answer to that question that fits with their firm culture mm -hmm. and their expectations of their employee. So with that example of how would you resolve conflict in the workplace, as an example, what a firm might be looking for is their employee to take responsibility of the situation. So a good response to something like that might be, well, I would understand that I have something to do with this conflict and I'm gonna take responsibility in the situation and some initiative and go talk to my fellow coworker apologize for anything I might have done to upset them and see if I can set the ship straight. Like before, think about the type of person that the business wants to hire. They want to hire people who can handle conflict. They want to hire people who can resolve situations and resolve rifts between employees. So when you're thinking of your answers, think in terms of that. The second type of question you're going to see are behavioral questions. Now, I think these are the questions that scare people a little bit more because they are more open-ended. This question might be something like, share a time in your life when you experienced X, Y, or Z, and what did you do? So share a time in your life when you experienced disappointment and how did you respond to it? Here's my trick for these types of questions. It might seem like it's quite hard to be prepared for these types of questions, but I've actually got a bit of a trick or a bit of a hack that is gonna allow you to just knock these out of the park. What I want you to do is write down five general scenarios from your life that have taught you something. From these scenarios, you've pulled some sort of a life lesson out of the situation. So maybe you learned patience or you learned perseverance, these types of things. I want you to write these situations down. And when you get these kinds of questions, I want you to glance at your list and see if you can tweak any of those situations that you've already brought to the front of your mind to answer their question properly. Now, you can almost always tweak one of these learning moments to properly answer their question. By writing them down ahead of time, you're gonna look prepared, you're gonna look sharp, and you're gonna be less stressed as you're kind of grasping for answers. At this point, you've left it all on the court. You've done everything reasonably possible to get the job. You've made the personal connection with an employee, you've talked to the recruiter, you've smashed the interview process, you're doing everything right. At the end of the day, you still might not get the job. And what I wanna say is don't take this personally. You never know what's going on behind closed doors. You don't know who knows a partner at the firm or who knows an owner of the company. And that edge is very, very, very challenging to beat. I can personally attest to working for companies where they go through the entire interview process, but they in fact already have selected exactly who they wanna hire by the first or even second round, sometimes even almost before the interview process has started. So if it doesn't go your way, just remember that it probably has nothing to do with you. I don't know if that's encouraging, but don't beat yourself up, that's for sure, and just move on to the next one. I think if you use this method across five, 10, 15 firms, the likelihood of you landing solid interviews is extremely high. Of course, I can't make any guarantees about locking in a job or anything like that, but using this toolbox is going to greatly improve your chances of just submitting an application on Indeed and expecting a job offer. I know it's a little bit more work, 
but it also can be a fun process. Interacting with new people, talking to employees of these companies, talking to recruiters, try to embrace it a little bit. And there can be some enjoyment along the way. And of course, it's gonna feel great when you lock in that job. If you have other questions or thoughts or input on the interview process yourself, things you've learned, please drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear your experiences and chat a bit about what you've learned along the way. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.